Hello, you're listening to the Streaming Audio Podcast. And one of the things I love about this industry is it can take you anywhere. You know, if you're interested in movies, movies need programmers. Are you interested in eradicating malaria? They need programmers these days. Are you interested in the mating habits of migratory birds? Yeah, even they need computer models, right? As programmers, we get to go into every industry, anything we're interested in. There's a job out there. Um, And for this episode, we're going to go into a world that I never expected to enter. But it turned out to be fascinating. It's the world of table tennis. And when you stop to think about it, it does make sense, right? The sporting world lives on real-time data. Someone scores a point, and you've got fractions of a second to update the scoreboard, let the commentators know, the bookmakers, the people checking the scores on their phone, to update the history books. Sports are made for live streaming data. And that's something that today's guest, Vatsan, realised when he joined the International Table Tennis Federation. He joined them right at the height of the pandemic and COVID had shut down all the major table tennis matches. So as this thing went, he got about an 18 month window to look at the way world table tennis handled data and just completely reimagine their systems for the 21st century. We got to record this one live in Singapore in Vatsan's office. And honestly, I'm not much of a sports person, but I found this really fascinating. So, streaming audio is brought to you by Confluent Developer. I'll tell you all about that at the end. But for now, come and peek into an international phenomenon through the eyes of modern technology. So my guest today is Vatsan. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to meet you up and then uh, explain about how the complaint has helped us. Oh, cool. It's, um, it's nice to be here. We're on location. For the people listening at home, we are on location in Singapore doing this in your office. Tell us about this place. So you are born out of the International Table Tennis Federation. Exactly. Tell so me something just to give some uh, insights about, uh, for people who don't know about table tennis or give more information about the uh, firm that I represent. Uh, International Table Tennis Federation, in short ITTF, uh, was conceptualized and formed in 1926. It's almost having 100 years of its history now. Centenary is coming up. Almost coming up. Yeah. And it's the uh, sports governing body. It's like a FIFA, so uh, football. So they manage the rules, they govern the sport. They also have uh, member associations. When I say member associations, it's the national associations or countries who play, who are members of the sport. And obviously, right through these 90 years of uh, their existence it's been more focused on governance as such but then we they wanted to get that up over like ATP or the FIFA to commercialize this which is exactly when we had the uh, world table tennis was born as a commercial entity for ITTF right this was a startup which was launched in uh, 2021 January not so long ago not long ago yeah and then the, the main focus for WTT is to get the, fa- the fans to engage more on the fans, to play table tennis, to participate as we see it in other sports. More and more we are getting fan engagement. And then with table tennis, one of the key stats that we have seen is the most played sports in the world. In really? Turkey. Exactly. And because if you see the, uh, the histor- history of uh, you know, football is one, and then it's quite, cl- quite closely followed by table tennis. You could play, play ping pong, it has its original uh, origin in uh, ping pong, where in China. Yeah. And then you started to have all of those players, even if you have a small table, people play. So exactly yeah. what, how uh, we started to see the opportunity for reaching out to the fan base across the globe. And that is where we are focusing on now, making the sport to reach out to the fans in a way that it is more commercialized in terms of managing the fans' interests, the players' interests, as well as the sport itself. Yeah, because it's like, I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all that there's a governing body for table tennis that's global, but I, yeah, I can see how that in the modern world, people who are really into it want live sports results and that kind of thing, right? Exactly. And f- that, that was the whole intent. When, uh, when I come from a kind of, um, I'm a sports enthusiast, and um, in fact, my father was a cricket umpire. 
uh, if not was on the international level, at least from a state level, he was an umpire. Yeah. And that uh, kept me interested in sports. And we have been a, a follower of uh, different sports, including tennis, football, and then obviously I played a bit of table tennis, but also a cricketer as well. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and that uh, gave me the interest over to be affiliated to sports somehow. And when I got the opportunity uh, to be part of a legacy, or to be part of a sports federation, to contribute to sports, I, I, I thought, yes, you certainly have to uh, take my chances here. So that was, that. I know you said um, in 2020 you were working for the Inland Revenue Service for Singapore. Exactly, uh, this was the Singapore government. Probably less exciting. I, I would say this as a government organization, we do have a set, set plan obviously yeah. and it takes its own course in terms of you know implementation and project timelines yeah. approvals uh, yes we do need those uh, observations in terms of a government organization without government organization we are not going to uh, survive <laughs> yeah uh, you need those but then uh, much less interesting compared to where I am now in terms of the sports. So how did they contact, where were the, tell me from the start, so where were they when they contacted you? What was their IT setup? Uh, we had, I think from uh, ITTF, um, to be honest, I was the first IT uh, em employee purely on uh, focusing on technology. Um, and uh, I was the first recruit for WTT in the technology side as well. Nice. So uh, I have, and unfortunately, when, I, when, when it comes to pandemic, I'll come to it later. But then when I started, the, uh, the, number, the systems were pretty much isolated. We had uh, systems over for uh, different sports products, with, you know, managed in Excel and uh, different <laughs> situations. So this was just moving on. We had products which were not integrated. This was another bigger pain point that we had as well. So the first part of it for me was to start off on a digital transformation journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, my senior management had uh, full faith and confidence in moving over this huge journey uh, because we have to consolidate historical data close to 90 years. It's the first part of it is the data consolidation. Oh, yeah. And that was the first part that I started to uh, map out what are the different sources of data? So the, histori the historical data was more important initially than gathering the matches playing today. Yeah, so to start with, you know, uh, for table tennis, the stats, again, this is the first part, right? In the structure of the data, yeah. it, okay. it comes from whether it is a, a match-related data or it is coming from the player's database or when you're talking about uh, entries or events, the winners, the champions, all of the data had to be consolidated to put in place a structure which we can take it forward, consolidate a structure that in a more uh, refined way that we can move ahead. And that was the first part of the journey where consolidate, place a framework over and then start to move on in terms of getting the digital transformation, having a consolidated and integrated suit of systems. Yeah, so you've got 90 years worth of data to build a strong data model again. Exactly, and that data model was the, was the key to start our journey. Okay. Because otherwise it will be like, you know, we are talking about having a single source of truth, and that is exactly nicely tied with your confluence concept as well. Yeah. We're having the same, maintaining and managing and, and, and uh, handling that uh, single source of truth. And right the immutable, I mean, it's perfect fit for an immutable historical log exactly, of data, right? Exactly. Yeah, Which yeah. is exactly why we wanted to, uh, uh, you know, get into uh, the Confluent platform. And uh, one of the other things that we also, I ha had an experience when I was evaluating products, when I was an enterprise architect working with uh, Iris. Mm. Um, the uh, con I got in be in I was introduced to different messaging platforms, and, and part of it was evaluating RabbitMQ, end service bus, and all these. And that is when uh, I had a chance to meet up with your team. Confluent came in; they had their uh, product, and then they helped us to evaluate for uh, the government, which is where my journey started with Confluent. Okay, so. So it was at the IRS you got into the first time that introduced. I, I know that uh, we had the Apache Kafka. I know the challenges of maintaining and managing the Apache platform as a kind of a uh, you know, uh, not a massive managed instance. So, and when I got to know about the the features, uh, even at the time, two years, three years back, Confluent was well established, and uh, the, I was quite impressed at the time when uh, I was introduced to the product, the features, the roadmap that they had for the last next three, four years, 
that was uh, really impressed me. That is exactly why the moment that I started out the digital transformation journey in uh, WTT, the first uh, you know vendor that I wanted to look into, the first product that I wanted to use was uh, Confluent. And then because uh, I of my uh, experience was working with Microsoft and Azure was also one of the uh, uh, the hosting platform that I'm using along with their services. Okay, so you're Confluent Cloud on Azure. Uh, Azure. Okay, yes. so you're happy with the providers. This okay. is a good thing. But let's let's get more into the technology, right? So um, you s established this long topic of historical event data. Is that a product in itself for WTT? No. So the, the first part of it was, um, and as I mentioned, you have the players database. You know, I mean, you're looking at it. We have 90 years of uh, data even for consolidating the players. Mm -hmm. Players, then you have events. We have data even going back to 1930 World Championship. <laughs> right. okay, that was the first time that we had. Uh, so we still have, we have touched the tip of the iceberg. We still have data which has still been written. Uh, we have handwritten notes in scoreboards and all these which are still lying oh in different goodness. offices. So we still have. Uh, and a significant work to do in terms of consolidation, mm -hmm. which effectively would be that, you know, yes, we are, we have made up the data model, we have consolidated the right amount of data which was digitized available, but then we still have some of the uh, consolidation to the conversion of uh, handwritten notes of scoreboards and all of these. <laughs> so the first part of it, as you uh, just to go back to your question, is to make sure that we identify the sources, identify and understand how our roadmap is going to be for the, the data modeling. Structure the data model and also have provision over migrating all of these data sources as we move along. It's, it must be nice because it's, it's something that intuitively maps to events, right? Sporting events, scores, that, that naturally maps to an event model. Exactly. Because you, you st start off with your, you know, when you come into uh, any sport and you have the players and you have your teams, and then the format of the sport is defined by the events. And if you consider, uh, give an example for uh, 10 people who have followed tennis, you have uh, different tiers of tennis, where you, uh, tennis events, where you have Master 500s, Master 1000, or uh, Grand Slams. And that is exactly what we wanted to conceptualize from WTT perspective as well. We have different tiers of events, starting off with the youth events, with under 19, 17, 15, 7, uh, 11 players yeah. promoting the sport, the younger generation. And then the second part is the senior and the uh, professional sports, where we have uh, equivalent to Grand Slams, we have the Grand Smashes, we have star contender, contender at different levels of uh, the events. And this is where exactly, you know, when you start off with the event structure, then you have all of the match related information and then the stats, whatever happens. Uh, in the match, consolidating over different analytical points that comes out of the stats. Right, yeah. So you're not you're providing the service not just for these big headline events, but it's also for more local matches. Exactly. Yeah. And, and our intention is, I think, um, our vision when it comes to our five-year roadmap is to even allow our products to be used at the club level, even. Uh, People, amateur, uh, playing at, you know, in a table in their club or whatever, they should be able to play, record the matches, and then be rated, and effectively can be moved over. And they can, if they, if they really want to uh, move ahead, and it's, it's always fun to be rated. You know, I play with you, with you, yeah. and then I, whether I'm better than somebody else, and then I'm rated against another friends group, and then so that is a, that is the intention, and that our ecosystem includes all of the fans reaching out to the last fan base. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because my son plays football and with glimpse of the modern world, he's on his phone checking live the sports results of the rest of his little, you know, 12 year old league. Yes, exactly. And there's predictive models so he knows what the score should be for the match he's playing tonight. Correct. It's the modern world, right? Exactly. And, and that, that, is, that is the reason that we are looking at rating, correct? So ra the ranking. So when, we, when you play your amateur games or even at the professional level, you always want to be marked against each other. That is where your individual ratings and ranking come yeah. in. All of that, we, it's not just about ratings. We are talking about you now recording your scores. You know, it's not just playing your scores as playing your matches, but at the same time, your, your matches match scores are recorded. Yeah. So that is the level that we want to go. It's not just for uh, professional sports 
not just for WTT, all of our products that we are trying to build is not for uh, internal consumption, for not for just all IT, yes, primarily yes, to start with for WTT and ITTF, but our intention is for reaching out to all of our member associations to provide these products to the clubs or to individual uh, players who could play in their backyard or having a table or in their, uh, in their club and start to be uh, involved in uh, table tennis. Yeah, because this is often the thing I sense in sports. Sure, there's a big commercial arm to get these big headline matches, but there's also the push to just make things richer for everyday players, for, to engage the world in playing the sport. Right? Exactly, and you, you touched on the topic where you want to say the predictive uh, analysis. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And this, this is exactly what we wanted to get through, right? Uh, this is not just for the professional sports. Uh, effectively, you n these days they start to have these uh, year-end results. When you are rated, you want to see how, whether I could be the uh, world number one on a specific uh, a discipline, whether I'm a men's singles player or a women's singles player. What do I get out? What do I uh, need to do to be the world number one? And these are the things that is a predictive analysis comes in. Yeah. But at the same level, when you're looking into fans, this is also the similar situation. Should I? Uh, work with my uh, friend or do I compete with my friend or am I the best in my group? Yeah. Uh, that is the level that we wanted to get to. Is because tonight's that's match going to be easy or am I, am exactly. I, have I got a chance to bump my Look, ranking exactly, if I beat this Exactly. Guy? It's a comparative analysis. Yeah. And so that is exactly why uh, table tennis as a sport we have not even touched on yet. We Our roadmap still goes into e-commerce, uh, merchandising, gaming. Uh, these are things we still uh, have in the roadmap. Uh, which is which are again AI data. You talk about uh, only sports data so far. We also have um, AI data, which effectively means when I'm playing a shot, the, the speed of my delivery, the spin rate at oh. which it is being delivered. You're recording things like spin rate. Yeah, we are, we are into that. <laughs> so, which is effectively we uh, have started off on that with engaging with our partners, and we started off the last two events uh, back in March. We have introduced that, we are consolidating that information oh as well. Goodness. And all that helps with Confluent because obviously every AI data is also a thing, uh, data point for us. Yeah. You know, if it gives a player, you know, if you're at the senior level, if, I, if I'm going to be uh, winning a point at a specific uh, speed of delivery or a spin rate, that again consolidates into a data point and that is a revenue point as well. Probably. Yeah, okay, so that, this takes us naturally and let's, let's talk about the real time, how data is dealt with as it's being played. Tell me about the, the real time nature of your set. Right, so uh, the way that we have uh, designed our architecture, as you have promoted Kafka, it's our central nervous system obviously, it's, it's the communication of the entire system. Even before we uh, get into the, uh, the matches, we have used Kafka to integrate the different applications and systems. Right from the time that a new player, for instance, Chris, you are entering it as a pro into <laughs> table tennis. Seems unlikely, but let's pretend. Let's start it off. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you have your uh, data entered as a player. Mm -hmm. And once you have an event, let's say uh, coming up in June, there is a, uh, there's an event in uh, Singapore that you're going to be registered with. You're setting up the event infrastructure, event setup, all of these event tiers, information about when, where the venue will be, how many players. You also have uh, event structures where you, you talk about knockouts, you talk about qualification rounds. So you come continue to configure the event. And then the next part is you got to have your player entries or event entries, who is going to be participating yeah. in it. And that automatically comes through Kafka. So the, the information of Chris, moves over with the information on event and Chris is going to play this event in June. Yeah. And then if there is cases where uh, this structure has to be now, it's going to be, let's say, uh, in a, one of the uh, stadiums, Singapore Indoor Stadium is going to host, mm. we would have our uh, result system established there and set up. And we, we are using uh, a touch pads for the umpires, so the umpires start to do the real-time scoring. It's not the manual scoreboards anymore. Okay. Yeah. So. To just to uh, give an insight about how the data flows, every time the umpire scores in a table, in an event, in a table tennis event, yeah. the data moves from the venue anywhere in the world to, to Confluent Cloud yeah. and then gets sent out to individual consumers including our mobile app and, uh, that we have launched back in uh, uh, last year, 2021. 
as well as websites, betting organizations. We provide live data feeds to streaming partners, to broadcast partners, course, yeah. all are real time. And that requires this SLA, which is exactly why we have relied on Confluent. And especially considering that the challenges that we have with managed cloud platform, it helped us to fast track our development. Yeah, this is, um, th this is a thing we often talk about in real time because we're talking about soft real time systems in which a late event is valuable, but how valuable, right? So uh, this is particularly at the edge with sports, uh, 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 finding out when the score happened yeah. is very, very real time. Like right. not quite, not quite AI cars, but like you need to know if that point was scored now because it's going to bookmakers and televisions. Right? Exactly, and, and and if you if you talk about streaming, uh, real time streaming, as you just uh, informed, where you have your uh, broadcast and you have to stream it with the live score, and the data has to be uh, connected. Yeah. And not just that, we also use even for uh, media archiving the same triggers effectively using Confluent. So look, give you an example. Yeah. When a match starts, you want to have to start the video archive. So effectively you start off with the trigger that is an event for us. Oh, okay. Which is even managed through Confluent. So is it, you're saying that the umpire is kicking off the recording Every, of the live feed? Effectively. Exactly. Oh, cool. So you have your match as an event. We, we have structured based on uh, Olympics um, data structures in terms of the events. Yeah. So we capture a match start and then the video streaming starts automatically and we are using uh, Azure's media services as well for live streaming at this stage mm -hmm. but then every part of you know let's say you want to uh, the match is completed then you have a prize money distribution all that is also triggered through this uh, our entire uh, umpire's touch uh, oh. touchpad application which is connected through uh, Confluent Kafka. So all their rankings and their prize money distributed in real time. Exactly. Uh, so so effectively when you have your event, obviously uh, rankings, we, in fact, uh, the way that uh, the infrastructure and the architecture that we have uh, put in place with the help of uh, Confluent, Kafka, as well as um, Microsoft hosting services, it has allowed us to publish ranking on a weekly basis. Previously, it was uh, monthly mm -hmm. and now on every uh, Tuesday morning, eight o'clock Singapore, we were able to publish the ranking. Reason, anywhere in the world that the events can happen, we are able to consolidate the events real time yeah. with the help of the data consolidated through company Kafka. And then we are able to process the results and then calculate the rating and publish it that's, back to the website. That's a huge improvement from monthly. But uh, you know I'm gonna ask this question, why is it not up to the minute? The reason is the the events run they, because the, it includes to the end of the uh, the event, meaning or the finals. Oh, you so have you can't to wait for. You can still do. You can do progressive rating. There's oh. nothing to stop them. But as a regulation for ranking at this stage, we complete the event and then calculate. Right. So the problem uh, is the real world is too slow. Yeah, <laughs> but there's also cases where uh, there could be uh, player penalties, for instance. So those are things that is that will only be decided at the end of an event, right, which right. that will you'll have to wait until the event is complete. If there is any penalties or if there is any other changes that will happen, people do uh, in in table tennis you have cases where you have walkovers and other things. So there will be considerations only done uh, near the end of the uh, the event. But that manual consolidation at the end is gone. You're saying. Uh, it, it still be triggered through the uh, the process where we will kind of get the result, but we have to wait until the finals. But as you said, there's nothing <coughs> to stop in terms of uh, getting real time uh, rating because that we get the results of, by every match. Yeah, and I and connected to the real time thing. I mean, call me naive, but I hadn't realized like bookmakers are demanding data SLAs of you these days. Exactly, and, and see the, when it comes to uh, give an example uh, from a betting side. You're talking about, uh, we have in table tennis, we have a game point 10, let's say, every game. Mm -hmm. And if I have to decide who will be the winner, and that is, it, and, and an average table tennis match is about 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you need to have this data, which is 10-0 to 10-9 to 11-9, has to be within the uh, milliseconds, obviously. Yeah from the time that the venue, uh, that the score is down in uh, the venue. So, which is exactly why the SLAs are very critical. 
and and this is this is one of the reason that uh, our confluent helped us with very limited effort in terms of setup and uh, configuration managed cloud was perfect for us with regard to having that availability the meeting the sla and we with thank to thanks to uh, confluent we are able to meet those sla so far and we have the reliability of the platform which is pretty much what we need with a limited effort in terms of maintenance so pretty much a uh, best fit for us for confluent and uh, and thankfully we have an expansion plan with regard to reaching out to all of the uh, the fan base and the member associations and it's we, we are in for a, a expansion which will likely be in 3 years time we would see that kind of a reach out to the, the fan base okay so, so to give me a sense of your roadmap for the future what is it you're trying to ex I think we, as I started off, first thing first, we need to start moving in uh, with all of these AI. We are even looking at blockchain, NFTs. Oh, okay. Um, and the next part is gaming. We also be looking at gaming um, and uh, also working towards member associations. As I started, uh, we wanted to license the products. We will want to make sure that all of the systems that we have built, including the uh, the data models, the structures, it's the cons the same structure that uh, the member association is going to use the table tennis as, as such it's the same structure so they could be using our uh, resource system they could use uh, the con the same uh, central uh, confluent uh, kafka stream yeah. and they still be able to produce the stats and for us we will be able to manage all of the data in as a central single source of truth which also helps us expand our fan base as well every data point that we are going to uh, get out of the license product will also be can be consolidated Right. Yes. And that, so that's the uh, that's the other, and then we are also looking at uh, moving towards uh, you know uh, real time stats because we wanted to go uh, stats at the level that we have now. Table tennis is a very uh, standard set of stats uh, data points. Now we want to go deeper into you know with all of these AI integrations, we want to show real time stats, uh, which is in the venue, building on to the sports presentation stuff in terms of broadcast to streaming. So a lot more in place in the roadmap uh, in the next three years, and obviously looking forward to uh, meeting all of the uh, the strategy and vision of the firm. Oh, cool! It's, so this is stuff like um, like you see people commentating on tennis matches, for instance, and, the, and he's hit the ball 103 miles an hour, and that's the fastest he's hit it for the past two seasons. Exactly, that and that, that's I think you got it. I think the, when you see that, you, you when it starts to uh, get into those kind of a stats, you know, mm -hmm. you think about. Uh, we have Fan Shendong is the world number one player or uh, anybody else who is the top 10. You could see that this is the fastest serve done by the top 10 player. That's the level of stats. Or it could be the, the thousandth point for that particular player during a month. So these are all stats that get more fans engaged. There's other aspects of that as well is our, uh, when we said about the roadmap, is also getting to know about the, uh, the fans better the demographics better in terms of uh, real-time click stream obviously we are using website we are using uh, yeah. app so the first party data coming out of it and also third party data just to make sure that we were building into the analytics platform to make sure we can reach out to fans better and then OTT e-commerce and other products also to be integrated into, into the uh, system right yeah so as, as you're sending them real-time data about the matches you're getting real-time data about how interested how, they are how interested they yeah. are so it's just the full not just the sports data and then getting to know the fans better yeah will also be uh, one of the uh, things that we would also look into so you can serve them better and that feeds back into the non-commercial arm exactly. right yeah exactly. so that's just so this is a full ecosystem that we wanted to build not just for the uh, for just running the um, event or running the matches it's just about building that full fan engagement right through spreading the sport to every part of the world because, uh, because again it is a global as I mentioned it's the global sport and we have 226 member associations right through and we have a lot of potential to reach out to uh, any any fan in any part of the globe yeah, absolutely. So it's, you've been going, what, 18 months, if I got this right? About that, That's yeah. fast. Yeah. Tell me about your next big match and how WTT is involved. We do have, uh, this year, I think, uh, as you, as we all are struggling with pandemic and we yep. are coming out of uh, the pandemic situation, uh, we had uh, some ups and downs in terms of uh, events being globalized. And we, uh, just to give some insight, we more, about 60% of our fan base is in China. 
and we have not started on uh, e running the events in China at this because stage. Ch table tennis is huge in China, right? It, and it you've is. not broken into that market yet? Not yet, because Why of not? the pandemic situation okay. where uh, you know, China is partly closed and we have uh, challenges over hosting events there. But now uh, we are going to be having you know, events back in uh, Q3, Q4. We have plans for uh, starting off the events in China. And that would be a kind of a huge market for us. And, uh, and effectively leading up to it, uh, you know, as we said, we've st we uh, had our uh, events in Europe. We had events in uh, uh, East Asia and we had in Singapore. And now we are now moving over to our bigger market, which is China. And once we have that uh, China, then it makes some, becomes in the number of events, the, the volume of fans that are going to come in. Yeah, it's just going to be. Uh, You're absolutely awesome. poised to go global. Yeah. <laughs> Any scaling sure. worries? With Confluent, I'm, I'm least worried because, uh, and, and one of the things that also helped, and I have to make a note here, uh, right from this uh, the start of my journey over digital transformation, and the moment that I identified Confluent. Kafka to be uh, the main uh, you know, product for me on the data messaging side. Mm. The professional services coming out from the Confluent team were always critical. They, they were part of the journey in terms of helping me out in defining the architecture, trying to run through the scalability and availability, security considerations, compliance cases. So this was too detailed when it starts to uh, get the support from uh, Confluent. And this was right the way through. Even we, uh, quite recently, we had uh, uh, architecture review session with, uh, pro with Confluent okay. team as well. That's cool. Just validating the architecture. And then they have been really helpful in uh, helping us out, not just on uh, architecture, but also helping us to meet our uh, strategic vision mm -hmm. and meet our roadmap and priorities. That's cool. Okay, so I shall have to go and speak to those guys and uh, thank you. Uh, they've been that. really helpful and then the, the, uh, the accounts team here in uh, Singapore has also uh, been really helpful in terms of having the, the right set of services and the right tiers, pricing tiers that, uh, again, you, you don't have to, um, uh, you know, any cloud services these days, you do have the option over where, you know, you can use uh, uh, incorrect pricing tier, which is not fit for you. Obviously, they guided me through in terms of having the right structure that can accommodate and be used for my uh, purpose. That's very nice to hear. But that's, that's um, a nice commercial note to end on, but I think we should get back to brass tacks. Um, there's a big table tennis table out in the lobby. I think we should wrap up the podcast and go and have a game. What Excellent. Yeah, we will do. Thanks for your time. Cool. Thanks for being on Streaming Audio. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers. Bye. And there we go. A window into a world that's very different, but still full of familiar challenges. Um, I should report that despite all I learned from Vatsan, I am still useless at table tennis, and I will be sticking to my day job. What is my day job, you ask? Well, part of it is reminding you that if you want to learn more about Kafka, real-time data, and building event systems, Confluent Developer is here to help. If you head to developer.confluent.io, you'll find everything there from beginner's guides to Kafka to high-level architectural patterns, deep dives, and some inspiring blog posts. It's all free, and it's written by some of the best people in the business, so take a look. And when you're ready to run Kafka in production, head to confluent.cloud, where you can get a cluster up and running in minutes. Add the code PODCAST100 to your account, and we'll give you $100 of extra free credit to run with. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do take a moment to like, subscribe, rate, review, click the notification bell, all those good things, or just drop me a line on Twitter. My handle's in the show notes, and we always love to hear from you. And with that, it just remains for me to thank Vatsan for joining us, and you for listening. I've been your host, Chris Jenkins, and I will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.